All right, welcome back everybody. As you can see here, I have a very, very simple ink story using Inky uh, that has two essential choices at the start uh, for this little dialogue that we're crafting to show off how to integrate ink into Godot. Uh, so the story reads, hello, how was your first day? You have these two choices. Okay, the teacher was really friendly or not great. I slept through my alarm, it was over an hour late. So again, very, very simple story, not overly complex, you know, not really very engaging, I must say, um, but totally fine for the purposes of what we're going for here. We're going to be coming back to this ink story to elaborate on this more, maybe give us more choices, load in some more variables so that we can read those variables from this ink story and have them affect some of our Godot game. Uh, but for right now, this is totally okay. So in order to get this integrated, the first step that we want to do to load this into Godot is to make sure that we're giving Godot that .json file that we looked at in a previous lesson. So I'm going to go to File, Export to JSON, and I'm going to go into my ink lesson, and maybe I'll make a new folder here that's called ink, and I'll do tutorial example.ink.json, perfectly fine. I'll go ahead and save that. Now let's go back over to Godot and see if that loads in. And another nice feature that has been added, thankfully, uh, to the more recent versions of ink.gd is that you can actually now see the .json file in your file in your resource folder. In previous versions, you weren't able to see that, even though it would actually be there. You just wouldn't be able to see it in the file system. Uh, kind of folder over here. So that's a really great thing because we now can drag and drop this in and you know, do other stuff with it, be able to get the path to it, exactly stuff like that. So the first thing that we want to do is that we probably want to load in this uh, template example into the script that we made in the previous lesson. So I'll click on the script. I'll go find where that story is being loaded in. And you'll see here in the ready ink player .ink file is loading that file. And instead of that resource path to file, you know, that's in the template, I'm going to copy the path of that tutorial example.json file that we just got and paste that into where we're loading our file. The other thing that I'm going to do here while I'm in the ready is to add my ink player to my scene. Because if I don't do that, then my ink player variable won't know how to go find my ink runtime singleton that we loaded in at uh, the top in our project settings, right? Right here. So in order to do that, I need to add child and then say ink player. Now again, this is a really important step because if I don't add my ink player here in the ready, the player itself won't know where to go get the runtime, which allows me to do a lot of the backend work to interpreting the ink file and the JSON components of it in order to load into the text that we have here. So we want to make sure that we're doing that before we continue to do anything else. Okay, that looks good to me. So let's now come back down here. And in continue story, because now the story is going to be continuing, Instead of just having the text be printed, I want the text to be visible in my dialog node. So I'm going to first comment out my print.text, and I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new variable here that's going to be called dialog text, and that's going to be equal to get node, and then I'm going to go find that color rect dialog node that is a child of my kind of parent node of ink template that the script is attached to. And then I want to change the dialog text dot text, which is the text property of that node to be equal to the text variable that I've declared just above uh, while my ink player story can continue. So I also, while I was debugging this, already commented out this select choice zero, because if I do that automatically, it will automatically 
if I do that by default, I should say, it will automatically choose the very first choice in the indices of choices or the current choices in my scene and basically take me straight to the end of my uh, story. So I'm gonna first comment that out in order to just make sure that this, uh, what I've implemented here is going to work properly to display my story in the dialogue that I've created in my template. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if that works. Great, and it does. It says, hello, how was your first day? And you can actually see that it's displaying the two choices that we have in our story in the console, even though that they're not visible here. Now, for our intents and purposes, we're gonna make those choices into buttons that we can click on to advance the story. And clicking on those buttons will then kind of con be connected to whatever the indices of those choices are within the ink story. You'll notice that some of the things here have changed a little bit. Again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with how to create new uh, nodes and things like that. But one thing that I do wanna note is that I have created a new scene that is a dialogue button. This is a button node type. And the important things here that we want to consider are that the size flags here are going to be expand on the horizontal and the vertical and shrink center on both of those as well. Again, those are within the control node parameters. And, you know, just for our edification, I've added my font here, which we're using for our other scene. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to actually load in those buttons and then populate my choices with those buttons in a choice container that I have here at the bottom of my kind of color rectangle. So in order to do this, I'm going to load in my buttons, these scenes, as something that I can add to this scene uh, dynamically based on the number of choices that I have in my story. So if I go back to my script, I'm going to start up here at the very top, and maybe while I'm here, I'm gonna start to you know, get rid of or trim down any unnecessary things that uh, we basically won't be needing um, in our script. So any of these extra comments, I don't need the import. And I'm just doing this for the sake of cleaning up some of my code here based on the initial template that was provided by the developers of GD Script. Okay, that's enough for right now. So what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna add a new variable here and I'm gonna add it underneath my ink player. And I'm gonna say on ready var choice button, and I'll just abbreviate that to BTN. And I'm going to load in that scene. And you'll see in my scenes in my resource folder, I'm going to right click on that and copy the path, paste that path in. And now I can load this variable in as instances within the rest of my kind of script here. So I'm gonna scroll down, and again, I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup as I go through this process. Okay, and I'm gonna go down into my continue story. And again, this is where the dialogue text is being printed. And I'm going to add within my kind of choice for loop here, instead of just printing those choices, I'm going to then instance these buttons within my scene. So I'm going to say var uh, button equals choice button dot instance. Okay. And I'm going to uh, instance a button for each choice. And I'm going to have the text of that button, button.text equal to choice.text. So that each text choice here will be you know, loaded in now into, let's just take a look here, right? Where it says choice here, that will be replaced with the choice of my story. And because I know that this button is going to be something that I want to click on, I'm going to use the signals, the built-in signals of the button node to send a signal to um, 
uh, basically my select choice here, but I'm going to add a little bit of an extra like wrinkle to that to be very specific about what choice I'm selecting in my story and to make sure that the index of that choice is being read correctly. First, I'm going to do, I'm going to say button dot connect. And again, this is connecting the built in signal of pressed to self. And I'm going to send this to a new function that I'm going to create that's called index choose. I'm going to add an argument that's called button. Okay. So what this is going to do is that I'm going to send the signal of the pressed whenever this button is pressed, I'm going to execute a function called index choose, and I'm going to pass an argument called button. Because what I want to do is that I want to add the button index, if you will, to this index choice, or index choose fun function. So let's do that really quickly. I'm going to say func index choice, and then I'm going to pass an argument here to pass that button. And then what I want to do is that I want to find the index of this button within the kind of choices that I have here. But in order to do that, I'm going to create basically kind of a placeholder array or a kind of a a place to at least uh, an array to to hold the indices numbers so that then I can pass that index number from my choice into select choice. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to create a new variable up here at the top. And I'm going to all name this, I'll put this right under ink player, and I'm going to say on ready var buttons, I'm going to make that equal to a blank array. And then going back into our choice loop here for current choices, I'm going to append my button here to that buttons. Okay, so what I'm doing here is that I'm basically saying, go through this for loop for every choice and create a button for every choice append that button to an array so that you can store the index of what that choice is, and then load that choice as an index down here so that we, when we select the choice, we're selecting the proper index corresponding to that button, okay? Basically based upon its choice, or excuse me, it's it being pressed. So here I'm gonna say that a new var is gonna be called index, I'm going to make that in equal to button. Oh, maybe I button. And then I'm going to say dot find the button that I'm passing as an argument here. And then I'm going to ask if index is not, oops, is not equal to negative one to then say select choice dot or select choice not dot but select choice index and again what this is saying is that if the index is basically not outside the bounds of this array that we found then go ahead and pass that index number into select choice which will then choose that choice index appropriately and continue the story based on that selection. Okay, the last thing that I need to do once I've kind of completed this process here is that I need to then also include that button in our scene. So I'm going to add that button to our choice container here. So I could do that by just getting the color rect and then choice container and I'm going to say add child button. Okay, now I could always uh, add a variable here that's looking for this particular node, but because my node tree is relatively simple and straightforward and the hierarchy is pretty legible to me, I'm just going to use the kind of direct node selector here. All right, let's go ahead and click play and see what this does.
Okay, I'm getting an error here, which is said invalid git index text based on string. Ah, I see. So the choice actually now isn't, uh, I don't need to pass the extra text here. Sorry, that's my own fault. And I can just say it's equal to the choice itself. Let's refresh this. Okay, excellent. So now we have our two choices here, right, as buttons. And I can click OK. And OK, we're getting an error. Ah, I misspelled index choose. I said index choice. Let's refresh this. OK, great. So what this did, uh, it did what we intended, which is to say the teacher was really friendly. So that is uh, advancing our text, which is great. And we can actually also see here that we get this the end. So this is working great. But what we want to do is also that when we select these choices, we want to make sure that we also are basically freeing these choices from the dialog container. So let's do that last bit really quickly. And I'm actually going to do that in my select choice function here. And the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to look for all of the children that would be in this choice container node that I have here. And I'm going to basically free them from the queue, right? Or I'm going to just remove them as children. So I'm going to say uh, for, I'm going to make a little for loop. And I'm going to say for button in, I'm going to say choice container, right? And I'm going to say get children, this choice container, remove child button. And then also I want to clear out that array that I've made before that's kind of temporarily storing all of my buttons because I don't want that array to potentially get confused with what choice I'm going to be making in the future. So I'm going to say button erase button. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how that looks. So when I click OK, it then removes all of the children that are in that choice container. And for our own edification, we could just look at this in the remote view so that we have our kind of color rectangle here, our choice container. We have our two buttons. So let's make sure that, that that's not covering up. And then when I click OK, right, those two buttons then get removed from that. And also, uh, if we wanted to, we could print, you know, the amount of indices or the amount of items in our array and buttons to just kind of make sure that that's the case. Uh, but for right now, this is functioning exactly as I wanted to. And even though the story is not very complex and is not giving us a lot of, you know, detailed description of what's going on with these two characters, we have successfully implemented uh, a visualization of our story, including choices in order to allow us to display our story and advance it by clicking on our buttons in our scene. All right, in the next lesson, we're gonna think about how we can expand our story and also include some variables in our story so that we can load those into our scene and they can start to change or modify something about our different icons for our characters. Okay, great, stay tuned.